see how we are dressed, me and you. We have covered our balls, but we are just like goats and dogs. It should be hiding. So this is one of the main reasons. Yes, it should be. Protect and let them be free. Data has shown that about 3 million babies have been born through the in vitro fertilization process, commonly known as IVF. It is gaining popularity as one of the ways through which people can make babies artificially. What is the process like? What does it take to have an IVF? And which people qualify to have an IVF? Today I'm at the Medifem Multi Specialist and Fertility Center to find all these answers for you. But before I introduce my guests, Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. So you're welcome back from that short break. And I'm here with a principal fertility specialist at the Medifem Multi-Specialist and Fertility Center. His name is Dr. Nana Henaku Labi. Hello, Doc. Hello. So yes. today we want to talk about IVF. I know the full name is in vitro fertilization, if I'm right. Yes. What is IVF? IVF, in vitro fertilization. I think before you understand what it really means, you must know what is the normal. And the normal is any couple who want to get a baby there are certain four things which have to be satisfied. Okay. Number one, it's the sperm of the man. Mm. Two, the egg of the woman. The egg and the sperm, they meet in the place called the fallopian tube. Mm. So egg, sperm, they meet in the tube. That's where fertilization takes place. Okay. So in normal settings, normal life, fertilization of a, a woman's egg is in the fallopian tubes. After the fertilization, the fertilized egg would drop down to settle in the uterus, in the womb. Mm -hmm. So these are the four things which are required for any couple to get a baby. The womb, the sperm, the egg, fallopian. the fallopian tubes where fertilization takes place. And then it settles in the womb. Four things, always. But for some reason, um, you cannot have the fertilization inside the womb of the woman. And fertilizing an egg or the woman's egg with the sperm outside the woman's body is in vitro fertilization. And in vitro means outside the body. It's a glass, it's a, a Greek expression for in glass. So in vitro fertilization simply means fertilizing the egg of the woman or whatever outside her body. Right. So when do or when are couples supposed to go for an IVF? Which indirectly means what are the reasons for IVF? Yeah. So after an egg is fertilized in vitro, we put the resulting fertilized egg, which is now called embryo, we put it inside the womb and let the thing grow and eventually the baby is born after nine months or so. Now, anything which will obstruct you from getting a baby may lead on to getting that fertilized egg outside the woman's body. Anything, and I group them into four into four reasons where 
uh, how uh, pregnancy takes place. So if there's a problem with the egg, pro with the egg itself, I start with the egg. I start with the, then followed by the sperm. And then where fertilization takes place, the tube. And then it settles in the womb. So I simply have to go through this for egg production. Sometimes the woman, you do everything, you are able to you give all those things, you think everything else is normal, but no pregnancy. Yeah. So it eventually ends up with us bringing the egg out and fertilizing outside that's doing the IVF. The next one is the sperm. Assuming everything is normal, and then the sperm is sort of deficient. It's not. If you introduce a sperm through the normal way, they won't be able to reach the, the egg itself. In that case, even the sperm, defective sperms, we can use the defective sperm in an IVF setup. That normally, you need half a million sperms mm. to fertilize one egg in normal life. Yeah. But if the def sperm is defective, what we do is <coughs> we take the egg, get the best out of the sperm, which is good, mix them outside. So that becomes an IVF due to uh, sperm, low sperm reason. And again, on the other hand, in certain situations, the, the sperms are so low, it cannot be used even in simple IVF setup. So we have to take one sperm, take one egg, and ourselves inject that sperm into the egg. And the process is called ECSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay, so if there's a case where maybe the sperms are the problem, the woman is okay and everything, they still have to do an IVF to be able to get a baby? Not necessarily. If all is well with the woman and the um, sperm cells are not good at all, unfortunately, we have to do an IVF. But if at some stage um, the sperms are good, are not good, but they are not that bad, we can wash them, save them, and do a process called IUI, intrauterine insemination. But even that, you know, it means we are preparing the sperm to inject into the womb to, for the sperm to go and meet the egg inside the tube. But some are so weak, they cannot... Look, you measure sperm quantity in millions. If you do a sperm check, they will tell you the normal is 10 million per mil or 10, 20 million and above for the whole thing. And then, and so you, you wonder why all these 20 millions, but you need only one sperm. And that is where XC comes in, or IUI comes in. But unfortunately, if you do IUI, you don't actually see the problem if it fails, if it doesn't work. You wouldn't know. Why? Yeah, but with IVF, you can see fertilization. You can see that there's something going on. Unfortunately, the baby is not well formed and eventually it may not happen. So I was asking, what's the chance when I do an IVF that it will be successful? 
Because it's just like science. Medicine is not open. Exactly. It is not exact you think you are succeeding at the end of it the whole world is about 37 percent chance of getting a success with the first ivf with a single ivf the whole world not certain places a little bit higher due to maybe superior conditions or techniques or whatever it's a slightly higher but it it's ours, we are an average of 50 point something. Some, and it fluctuates. It depends on who you are dealing with. An elderly person going through a normal IVF, the chances are not as high compared to a, young, a younger person aged in the 20s and things. If, other things are okay, but an IVF is required. They have a higher chance of sometimes over 70%, 77% chance of getting pregnant. And because I was going to ask what age it is the best advice of all to have an IVF. The best age to have a baby in any woman is 22. Oh. Huh? <laughs> 22 years. It's the best age to have a baby. This thing is stuck in my brain for a long, long time since I was... It's the best age. The younger you are, it's not that good for a young girl of 18, 19 to have a baby. Mm -hmm. The older you are, then it's going towards... Women have an expiry date. From 35 onwards, your fertility potential drops drastically, declines. So if you are 35, so for instance, if you come to me at the age of 28 or 24, 6, and that you have an infertility problem, it will take time to go through. But if you are already 35 plus, we wouldn't give you the normal time that people expect you to get pregnant, no, we start investigating immediately. Because the, as the older you are, the less likely your fertility potential. That's, that's very interesting, <laughs> quite intriguing. 22 years is the best age. Age for having a baby. And the longer it takes, the higher your chances. Yes. So, um, how is the procedure like? Is it painful? Is it stressful? Um, okay. Is it expensive? Let me start from the bottom. Expensive, yes, it is. But comparatively to other nations, I think we are very cheap in Ghana. Like how much? Normally, in the US, in, for instance, you spend more than $15,000 to uh, go through an IVF procedure. Ghana is roughly about $5,000. Dollars. Dollars. Okay. Max. Dollars. Roughly. And it depends on various units. You know, there are some units which are, we all differ a bit, but averagely, in fact, I was estimating we were much less than the five thousand dollars, but and, and because the exchange rate that that's um, that's a problem, mm -hmm. but that's the average cost of uh, we don't charge in dollars, we charge in cities. Okay. Then, yeah, uh, in fact, I was having a headache. I I was taking paracetamol, you see, I'll squeeze my face and just to take the tablets. Everything is uncomfortable in medicine, but we try to limit the pain as much as possible. Is it painful? What is IVF? How do we do it? We do that by giving you a series of injections takes you about two weeks every day you have to take that injection and then once <coughs> sorry you get to 
a level where we are putting the baby inside, there are another series of injections until the baby is well established, which takes another month or two. So injections itself in IVF is very, very uncomfortable. People complain a lot that sometimes my buttocks is swollen and that. So that's number one, where you experience pain. Two, when it's time to go and you've produced the eggs, you've got to collect the eggs from the woman. And that is called egg retrieval. That's the second part of IVF. And of course, we use some long needle through the vagina using an ultrasound to prick. So it's not a major operation. It's an uncomfortable situation where you use a needle to go and aspirate all the eggs. And after that, 20, 30 minutes, they are gone. They go home after that. But the procedure is uncomfortable. So we give you something called conscious sedation. Conscious, mm. you are sort of, but you are fully sedated, no pain, nothing, and it's a very brief period, normally not more than 20, 30 minutes for the egg collection, depending on the number, some 10. So yes, that bit is a bit uncomfortable. So you feel some pain. Your eggs are fertilized outside and Five days later, we have to put the eggs into the womb. And that one, it's ideally, it's not painful. It's just like having a normal relation with your husband. You know, you feel something being down there. Minutes, seconds, we push the baby inside. So how's sperm collection like from the man? How do we collect the sperm? We don't put needles and things like in the woman, but the main um, source, the main source is from masturbation. Okay. You know what that is? Yes. Have you done it before? <laughs> I'm not a boy. I'm not a man. <laughs> so they masturbate and then see the fluid coming out. Okay. And uh, sometimes it's very difficult for the clients, the patients, okay. And uh, I'm sorry, I made a joke with it, but some need their wives to come and help them to do that. We resist from, we resist or whatever you call it, from having sex in order to produce the sperm. That you lose a lot, especially the initial sperms, you know. You may lose them, but that's where the concentrated things may be. Okay. So having sex to having sex to produce sperm, it's um, we cannot we don't advise. On the other hand, there there are certain cases where there is no sperm normally. We have to dig into the testis area and and aspirate some sperm. This is a special condition where there are no sperms even when they make their normal ejaculation, no sperm. So we have to find some sperm around the testes there and aspirate to, to use it to, to, to do the IVF. Right. Thank you very much. At this point, we'll go for a quick break where we um, speak to one of the people who have undergone IVF. She'll share her experience with us and how um, the whole process was for her. When we come back, we'll speak more to Doc. So currently I'm with Akosia. She's had an IVF procedure and she was successful. So she's going to share with us what she went through, how the process was like for her. Hello, Akusi, and thank you for speaking to us today. So I just want to know how your IVF process was like. Oh, by God's grace, I would say mine has been successful all the time. 
because uh, I think I first came here 2014 and I mean a distance marriage so it's like oh you are okay nothing is wrong so let's give you medication then you try your natural cycle we tried it up to 2017 still then the doctor said then let's go and do IVF so we've been we've learned a whole lot of stories when you go do IVF first time it's not successful you have to do multiple times blah 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 so it's like I was scared but I held on to my faith so my with my first attempt like medication first they'll give you medication I think they said my problem was PCOS PCOS, so they will give you medication to boost the eggs, then the maturity of the eggs, everything comes as well, then they retrieve the eggs. So after the retrieval of the eggs, they are expecting that within the next five days, you'll be fine for them to transfer the embryos. But with my first five days, I had something called OHSS, without one, you bloat, then you vomit, like you cannot even eat. You feel hungry, but you cannot eat, mm -hmm. and it's like you are not by yourself. So because of that, I cannot take it on the fifth day. So you have to treat me and wait till the next month. So by God's grace, the next month when I came, they transferred, and everything was fine. I think my first pregnancy was triplets, but along the line, it's like two couldn't stay, and left with one. And they were saying, people were saying, hey, I will have the, they will, remember, they will stitch your womb, do blah, blah, blah. But with God's grace, they didn't stitch my womb. Everything was successful. My girl is now four years. Mm -hmm. Thick, tall girl. And I think later on, we said, oh, we want more. So after two years, we came back again to do the same thing again. That one too was successful. I had a successful pregnancy. But just that along the line, um, I had an ovarian cyst which ruptured. So now I couldn't control the pain with the pregnancy. So they have to remove the pregnancy. So with that, everything, um, got the treatment, I have to take time before. Then I came again. So when I came again, it's like that one too. After the retrieval of X, because mostly... It's like I go for 15 eggs, 17 eggs, but with this one, I hated 36 eggs. So that means it wasn't easy. So I bloated. My stomach was like eight months pregnancy. I want them five square. So they have to treat me again. And with that one, I was like, always, I think I'm strong. So sometimes I even go home and come back for the treatment, then go back again. So with this one day, as soon as I went to the net, I was they told me now she stay because i'm not looking well and i saw then i said me i'll go home because mostly when i finish i drive and go back home and he said hey so is that what you've been doing it's not good it's serious you have to stay so i didn't stay i didn't mind them and i went to oh i fainted so that means I have to rush back i said it's my own i saw then uh but i can say when i came back they treated me they, they were, one thing i like about them is no matter what they have time they have patience they will talk to you well and they will call you to check on you even i can say i have almost all of them they are now my husband too in case of any even in the night my husband will call them my wife is not feeling fine they will call you come wherever the medication is they will try and take the medication so you will become fine so with that one too i had to wait again then come and do the transfer again and one good Tennis. mostly my the semen they use is not fresh because my husband is not around so mostly it's stored semen so just imagine the owner of the hospital will tell you that we are good because imagine the stored semen that we use for it uh-huh the stored semen and even after that they have to uh, store the embryos too for like three four months before the trans yeah with some people, with their man will be there, the owner, they take the cement and put it in. But with my, not that, but at the end of the day, I get successful results. Me, fine, they are doing their job. But I believe in God too. I know without God, 
nothing can be possible so one last thing i want to ask is how was the journey like emotionally how were you feeling <sighs> it's not easy because last time i told one lady at the front desk climbing the staircase up there having having hoop what pains me is you have to always come for injections there is not the medication alone that you take alone the injections alone you take especially before they retrieve the eggs and after the retriever and they've transferred you have to take an injection again that injection there the one giving you the injection is not painful the injection adrenal kasana they give it to you and after that you could say otonya na hey oh yeah so me if somebody is sitting somewhere and especially you come and beat my daughter there i'll kill you yes because the pain and emotionally alone because last year when i miscarried it's like when i'm working i've been crying because after that you know you have to also see the doctor come again for that to variances that i had because of the pcos that i have it's likely that it will come so it's not their fault it's normal the experience emotionally just imagine somebody sitting there the husband is sitting beside her the lady was crying when I got there, she was crying. I was said, I said, it's painful. And I said, really? It's painful. Go and ask her if it is painful. How many eggs did you get? She would tell you like 10, 15. But me, 37 eggs. Even if it was painful, I didn't cry. Who did I go and cry to? My husband is not here. My mother is not here. So I just keep quiet and lie down and fold my arms. So emotionally, it's not easy. <laughs> All right, thank you very much You're for welcome. sharing your experience with us. She says the process, even though quite painful, is worth it at the end of the day. Let's go back to Doc and conclude the conversation. Yeah, welcome back. So I'm seated back with Doc. In this part, we're going to talk about some of the controversial things that we've heard people say about IVF. What people, um, women who go through IVF are supposed to do, some of the facts, the misconceptions, and all of those things surrounding it. Doc, welcome back, and thank you for um, staying with us. So, thank I've you. Heard, personally, I've heard people say that when you have an IVF, um, the likelihood of getting two or more babies is very high. I've seen someone who has given birth to four quadruplets and everybody said well, she did an IVF and she also confirmed that she did an IVF. So what's the chance of getting multiple babies from an IVF? And if that is very true, why is it the case? Yes, um, normally you've stimulated, you get <clears throat> a lot of eggs. You fertilize them. Sometimes you get as much as 10, 15 fertilized eggs, which are called embryos. So, actually, we discuss with the patient how many do you want to put in? And those, some of them who have been, you know, a, a, a yearning for a baby for a long time, they will tell you, doctor put five, doctor put four. But elsewhere in the US, UK, you are not allowed to put more than one. Mm. Ghana, we don't have a law restricting us. Okay. But I will tell you soon, we will have, because we are working on it, the government and then our association Together we are working on a, a draft to regulate. regulate these things. And yes, we put, for us, not more than three. If anybody even wants three, I, they have to take special permission from me before I agree. Otherwise, we normally put one, two, and yes, sometimes three. It depends on the way we see your fertility potential in a young woman everything seems to be okay maybe due to something the male side or we try to limit 
as many as we can. You put three, you may develop all three. And that you have the three place. Some they insist, they insist, they really give us tough time. They want, and even for that, we make them sign. They want four. You put it and they would develop a quadruplets. But to be honest, with our standard, we find it a failure if somebody has more than two. You failed. Because three, four, you see it in the you hear it in the news and all that. Really, it's it's not right because the amount of torture the woman goes through to carry these four babies is no joke. And why they normally end up having miscarriages. So the higher the order of pregnancy is, the more likely you develop a miscarriage. There are situations where some women themselves from their family background and all that, they can develop the higher order, multiple babies, okay, and so uh, that is not very common. That is to mean that maybe just one egg was put there, but they may be able to develop twins from that. That one. training from the one egg yes. is commoner and it's more, <clears throat> it depends more on the genetics of the person. You have a person from a training family, it can't easily happen. Right. So now let's talk about the do's and don'ts. When you are about to get an IVF, what should you do? What should you not do? Your lifestyle. Um, it's why are you going for the IVF? Whatever is preventing you from getting pregnant, if it's preventable, you should try to avoid it. Smoking, you drinking so much, even your husband always, you know, drinking so much. And this is part of the process of not getting pregnant. Food-wise, there are several a, a condition where, which is related to diabetes, for you to have poor egg production. In that case, you have to try and, with the advice of the doctor, to try and sort of manage that situation where your egg production can can be. It's a very popular situation called polycystic ovaries syndrome, PCOS they call it. And then in that case you have to watch what you eat, what you so as to you know limit whatever. Men usually when they are poor low sperm, we ask, encourage them to take um, honey and look, see how we are dressed, me and you. We have covered our balls, but we are just like goats and dogs. It should be hungry. So this is one of the main reasons. Yes, it should be. Protect and let them be free then pregnancy will take place. So avoiding, you know, the root of the pregnancy, non-pregnancy causes could help in the, in the situation. IVF is as simple as that. We promote eggs. So even if your eggs can't, you can't promote it because of those, some of the conditions I've mentioned, we are not going to succeed because even though we are doing it, the eggs won't come. Yes, we do get situations where no eggs are produced mm. and we have to cancel the whole cycle. And uh, so uh, anything which will make you, your in initial doctors will tell you regarding 
do this or that to promote fertility, it's sort of required in general. There are no specific requirements that I'm going for IVF, therefore I should not drink tea, I should not drink coffee and that sort of thing. I heard them talking about it, but... Uh, it's not true? Okay. So it's, there is no medical basis of it. It's just like the normal care pregnancy thing. Okay. So can you choose the gender of your child? Yes, it's possible. But unfortunately, we don't do it in Ghana yet. I heard some of our colleagues, they've been trying. We call it uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. It means before the egg gets stuck in there, we manage to bring one, bring some out, you take a cell out of the developing embryo and study it for whatever you want to. Apart from sex typing, there are some medical conditions where you can diagnose this before the newly made embryo gets implanted. So they take them to the lab, remove one cell from the growing embryo, and test it. Sorry. <coughs> Unfortunately, sex typing, it's a bit, it's supposed to be common, especially with the Nigerians, but it's a very expensive way of going through doing what I just described, PGDs. Yes. Finally, I want to know some of the um, lifestyle choices that young people can adopt to reduce infertility rates because sometimes our lifestyles also put us at, at risk of not being able to reduce Very much. both in men and women. So before um, you even get to the point where you need an artificial um, help to be able to produce, what can you do as an individual? Oh, can, yes, you you learned something from me. I said the best age to have a baby is. Yes. So that's hours. number one. You don't wait and keep it when you are 38, 40, then you come for a baby. And seriously, it it seems the infertility has gone up, infertility problem. It's mainly due to the woman's age. I, I know aim to have her own career and therefore a delay you know you are postponing your fertility and it's not only fertility issues i'm sure you've heard about something called the fibroids yes. you've heard about endometriosis yes. these are all something to do with not the uterus or the system not having a baby. So fibroids take over. Endometriosis take over. My mother had me when she was 46 years. Can you imagine? At that time, I said there are no endometriosis and no fibroids. Why? And after me, 46, there were three, a twin and a terrier. That was my mother. Now, from the little you have gotten from me, how did it okay? How 46 she was still having a baby? Because she started very early and continued every two years, every like that. So the spacing to the I mean, we're talking of the scientific aspect of it. We. I'm not trying to be controversial, but it's a fact that as you delay your fertility thing, these diseases I mentioned, fibroid, and they take over because of what we call estrogens, which come up and they stimulate the growth of the fibroids very much, stimulate. And then at the end of it, you are struggling every year 
Every woman was born with a number of fixed X. Listen to this portion. At birth, you have about a million to two million X in you as a baby. Then as you grow, 10, 12, 11, you have your first menstruation, that is called menarche. You have lost about 30% of your endowed eggs. And every month that you menstruate, about 40 to 50 eggs come out for only one to stick his neck out. It will also answer you, are there problems with IVF because you are producing more eggs? Is she going to be able to... The eggs that you lose during IVF or you make, you would have lost them anyway in a normal brasher. So yes, age at which you have your family is very important. Young, younger girls, you should be very careful. You should be very careful not to have your tubes damaged from miscarriages, abortions, and things like that. That's very important for the younger ones. Inordinate sex, infections down there, tubal damage, eventually no baby. If, for both sides, male and females, if you had any issues about fertility, don't waste too much time. You go and see the doctor. They will assess you. And the other thing is men, they usually blame women for whatever their problems are, but they are equally culpable. But 40% of infertility is due to men. Thank you very much, Dr. Nana Henaku Labi. He is Principal Fertility Specialist at the Accra Fertility Centre, subsidiary of Medifair Multi Specialist in Fertility Centre. And he has been speaking to us about IVF, the procedure, the do's and don'ts, and things that as young people we can do to enhance our chances of fertility. My name is Stella J. Jomsugi. <music>has many sides. Whilst it's yet to be unraveled, Stoneboy, who was one of the ambassadors of the gold dealership firm, endorses NFT. Well, he's been dragged on social media and by some influential people, but he says he cannot be pinned for the men's gold mess. We are seated for a conversation on this one, on this episode of Bloggers Forum. I am Benefo Boabin Abrantipa. Welcome to Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. Thanks for joining us. We are seated for a riveting conversation. Joining me on the show today, McDonald Nanayao Asari, a.k.a. Romeo. The man who is an actor, he is an author, he is a voice coach, he is an event organizer, and he is the assemblyman for Medina Social Welfare. Romeo. Romeo. Akwaba. Diaboko. I forgot where I first heard this thing. It's funny, Mati. I'll call review. Black Pepper is with blackpepper.com. The man who appears on Moons and Cuddles prefers to be called Mystic Mike because I know you're sexy. Mystic, yeah. thanks for joining us. Many thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, you can also say one day at a time. Uh, yeah, one day at a time. Mati, Romeo, free your mind. Um, my dream to free my mind, I feel that people within our, our 
industrialist space. Some of the investigation in the industry be as but this industrialist space, you know, some people have made themselves difficult, <laughs> and they feel whatever they have to say. When they say it is final, and they think they have the magic wand to control everybody, including a top-notch artist. A deputy minister of his caliber who could just spew out certain words like he blacklisted some artists or blocked an artist's work uh, just to get back at them. You measure such a person's comments against people with real integrity in such a position in any world, in any part of the world, anybody with integrity will resign from such a position. Because when you're put in a certain position of diplomacy, you see yourself as a leader for all, but not for some. So things of the past, when you when it really stares at you, say a bia bibia bonka yana say bibi boni away in the past, na say uh be crying investigating the boa who integrity or say we don't say no, who did brain on any sarcasm. Um, as a, creati- a deputy minister mm. of a creative arts ministry, I'll make you some comments about some artists they are blocking or um, based on uh, the personal uh, issues with them. And I feel the reason why I'm a woeful is that today the same person is telling us, sir. If we get the opportunity by the microphone, we should try to project the image of Ghana. Uh, he we said he blocked them because of his personal... No, but what, what was the whole thing that... Uh, when he, what, what was his issue with Sarkozy when he said he blocked the Mary album? Me, me I don't know about that. Ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. But I mean, my point me, is... I know about the Stone my Boy. Point is, my point mm-hmm. is, the industry or whatever space we are in is bigger than any individual interest. Mm. So then, if you are telling me today, that I should project the image of Ghana regardless of what is happening around us in this country and not act like Trini Jonas. You have acted that way because you didn't think out of the box to think that these artists are big enough. They uh, 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 hoist our flats outside the country and they become image or ambassadors of the states through their acts. And and let, uh, can we not assume that... I'm not assuming. No, no, I'm saying, can we not assume that he erred in the past and he doesn't want us to continue on that path. Like, we need to get things right this time. Then, the right thing he would have done was to apologize mm. and then to move on. But when you make certain comments with a smack and feel that, like, you, you've achieved it, yeah, you, you did that. Hello, damn it. You did what? You are not a damn it god. You are a deputy minister for crying out loud, and that position is not perpetual. Okay, so let's, let's put it in context. I, I, I don't know about the Sarko there, but what I know about the Stone Boy is that he said they were, HFM was trying to get Shatawali, and each time they called him, he was not showing up. So they decided to build their own star. And that was when they decided to push Stone Boy. What is, wrong with, what is wrong with a media house deciding to make an artist a hero by pushing that artist? In that context, the magnitude of uh, uh, attraction that uh, uh, Marco Kriku attracts in terms of even our judgment in music industry, in this music space. If you have a sort of an academy mm-hmm. to, uh, uh, to nominate uh, uh, awards and stuff, and he's part of it, and here is Shatawali, the more reason why I'm getting Shatawali, uh, I, I start reflecting on certain things in the past is that if he finds himself in a, on a board and Shatawali happened to be on that board and indeed if Shatawali was even the best artist of the year mm. and because of his personal issue with him, it will affect his judgment. Uh, and this is the kind of person we've had in Ma- the Mark is only one person on, on the VGMA board at the time. No, but you see... Where we had like 14 people or 13 people. So exactly. 13 against one person. In the fold of many, mm-hmm. when you have someone who is opinionated, some people try to pin their opinions based on the person's uh, ideas. So it happens. He influences people. He's got the influence. Mm. I'm just coming from that perspective. That if you find yourself in an angle, even as a media house, all media houses can have such situations. Mm-hmm. To black secretly, they can develop someone because, uh, let's say TV3 for instance, they develop some talent. Mm. So they, they could make do with some talent they've developed through mentor, right? Mm-hmm. If you try to. But they won't come out any person who comes up from TV3 to make that comment open, in any case, it's a flaw. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And in, in, in uh, Michael Kriku's capacity as a deputy minister, he represents everybody. But now, that, the time he made the comment, he was not a deputy exactly. minister. See, let, uh, the issue here is that 
in, in Europe or in America, mm -hmm. if your past has any uh, negative uh, 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 bearing, bearing mm -hmm. on your present, mm -hmm. it can still affect you. But and any is, person with integrity will resign. This is someone who went through vetting and the committees thought it wise. I don't want to talk about this country's issue in terms <laughs> of vetting it. This is a country where people do things according to their homes and caprices, then everybody's opinion. Mm. So put this vetting issue No, but aside. you agree with me that some of the nominees, their vetting came with a whole lot of controversies. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I mean, so that, that's... So it tells you that this in, is a in, country where... In the case of Okre it wasn't like that. No, mm -hmm. The fact you made that mm. this is a country where people don't remember they have integrity until people malign them. This is where they try to sue people in court for defamation. Mm -hmm. But the real level of, the test of, the level of uh, uh, test of integrity is when you realize that this position I occupy with this kind of comment I, I have made, I think I've been unfair to the people, so I need mm -hmm. to step aside. Mm -hmm. To show respect, those are the people with integrity. And we don't see any in this country. We hear people uh, uh, squandering or, 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 or uh, uh, involving in certain undesirable characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by uh, considering their position, they are not even supposed to be uh, be holding on to, but they will still be in position till that kingdom comes. Again. So it tells you mm. that this is not a place where uh, vetting or integrity come to play. Where people say what they like because they feel they have the power to say so. Let's still swim in hypothetical, um, you know, waters. Yes. <laughs> Assuming that Mark does not see anything wrong with what he said in the past, but it, he's urging people to push the creatives. What is wrong with that? First and foremost, if you realize what you did in the past was wrong, the first thing... No, I'm saying he, he doesn't realize that... <laughs> it, it, he doesn't admit or he doesn't see that he erred. If he sees no fault yeah. in what he said, mm -hmm. then he has no business in trying to advise us against what he preached against. Oh, really? Yes. He has no business. Before I try to prove that I've changed or I've had a change of mind towards what I thought in the past, mm -hmm. then I need to apologize that maybe in the past this certain thing do, did happen and maybe from a deeper in, uh, uh, introspection or retrospection, I feel it wasn't something uh, well placed. Mm -hmm. And I'll urge all and some to come together because this is an industry where we need everybody to push forward. Mm -hmm. That would have been a mature delivery. Okay. But you don't tell me and say it with a smack and feeling big and then you won't Come on. So because of that, people will not push the art. Exactly. No, no sense. And then you tell us that even if the, uh, uh, what we call it, tourism is, uh, is engaged in something mm -hmm. and you're a musician, you're not being invited, drop loser. Monkey, you know the word for Babu Monkey Chop. Those close to the tourism sector or set are being paid to churn out certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. If you want to involve people, involve them in a proper way. You don't just throw the bait and call everyone up. Uh, on board in, in just an open speech without uh, uh, towing the relevant uh, uh, steps to get them together. One, to push all these things, you need to uh, mend broken uh, uh, pieces. Because mm. you have your top notch artists who are at loggerheads with you, and your deputy minister, your business is to start smoking that piece of pipe. So that at the end of the day, when you have something on the table, it's easy to get them to get their colleagues to join the fray. But you don't try to uh, uh, throw it out there and assume that, oh, uh, you know, Ghana, some artists are hungry, so even if these people won't come, the others will come. When the artists try to join hands and start taking serious decisions, people like Marco Pickman's influence will, will, will have no seat in this, uh, let me call it, industry less industry. Black Pepe. Yeah, um, to uh, briefly touch on the Marco Pickman's issue, um, what I would love to say is, of the four notable artists we have in this country, um, Sakodia, Samini, uh, Stoneboy, and Shatawali. At the moment. Mark has told us that. He still don't want to add there at the moment. Urban, <laughs> urban. One of the four, the four biggest urban artists we mm. have. Mm. Okreku Mante has made it clear that he either blacklisted projects of two of them. Mm -hmm. That is um, Sakodia and then Shatawale, mm. or blacklisted the artists themselves. And this is very troubling. This is very troubling. And so if today, Okreku Mante, who has been a music producer, a music distributor, has been an artist manager, has been a, 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 a reality show 
judge has gone through the mill to become a deputy minister today is rallying stakeholders mm -hmm. industry persons that in everything we do we should think of the ghana brand mm -hmm. we should think of projecting the ghana brand i think it is time he offered an apology to shatawale and to sir Kodier that whatever it was the decisions and the protocols and the regime they put in place was misplaced and indeed it could have been handled better mm. i expect him to render such an apology and not only render a public apology to men bridges with these artists who by the actions and decisions of ukraku mante and the team and the platform that he led impacted on their earnings impacted on their mileage mm. he needs to mend that bridge before he can have any authority to call for a national consensus in projecting the arts. Anything apart from that will be held in the, with the contempt that it deserves. Okay. Because it wouldn't be coming from a place of uh, sincerity and a place of uh, uh, meaning well. Okay. But having said that, mm. let me swiftly uh, uh, sweep through some of the topics making the rounds. Uh, at 46, Rita Dominic, celebrated Nollywood actress, has finally found in Fidelis um, a man to commit to for the long term. Mm -hmm. It's always about the long term. I mean, of course, Rita Dominic is a pretty lady. She's an endowed lady, a fair, charming damsel. And so That's certainly uh, she would have suitors. <laughs> she would have admirers. But to whom would she commit to for the long term was the big question. And finally... Uh, we've, we've had the answer that uh, Fidelis, who owns one of Nigeria's largest newspapers, and is also the owner of the Miss Nigeria pageant, as I understand, is the one she decided to commit uh, to for the long term. I would also look at Zander, Zandi Kamel. You know, we've discussed Quick Anija uh, and, 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 two and, minutes. and let's, them let's together. Move. I've yeah. heard of miscarriages mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, uh, it does happen that sometimes our DNA or genetics clash. How could one have miscarriages, four miscarriages in, uh, in one year? Then it shows that the genetics might have come to play. And so I'm very content that they've parted ways. She should do, go through the healing process. And then now she's advised herself not to put her next relationship in the public glare. Mm. This has always been an admonition that we've given people in the public sport that guard your relationships. That people have done it for so many God, years. Got your relationship. But Chami Kofi so and Stacey have been together for if, like 16 years. If it's today that she's seen the light and decided not to flaunt her daily activities online, that's fine. Or Chami Kwame, when Stacey went ill, did not come posting daily updates. Mm. They shielded Madam Stacey so much so that some people did not know that Stacey was only taking coconut water for many years. She couldn't take any other thing. She was only imbibing coconut water. And so what I'm saying is that the fact that someone puts their love or relationship on social media, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't mean that it will, it it will, will fail yes. or it will succeed. Yes. Given that, mm -hmm. given that she has not come to a realization. That, that it didn't work for her. That it didn't work okay. for her and right. that what she was even fronting was not entirely hers. Mm -hmm. But you remember there was, there was actually uh, an interview that I chanced on. Mm -hmm. I think it was on Hits FM or so. Mm -hmm. She would gladly say that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, more like, mm -hmm. oh, side chicks are also very, very important. Mm -hmm. So, they are there uh -huh. to snatch. So, now she is a casualty. Uh -huh. uh, Madam ne uh, Yvonne Nelson has also said that keep your relationships okay. away from social media. So, let's, 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 let's actually make a progress. For those who may not be aware of the Ukraine Kumante story, uh, this was actually published uh, on October 10, 2028. Uh, it's a story by nydjlive.com. October 10, 2028? Uh, yeah, 2018. I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, from nydjlive.com. He said, President of the Creative Arts Council and Programs Director of the Accra-based HFM, Okokrek Mante, has revealed he played an instrumental role in a move to blacklist Ghanaian rapper Sarkodie's fourth album, Mary from multimedia platforms. That story actually has the caption I led multimedia's move to blacklist Sarkodie's Mary album, Ukre Kumante. Speaking, on Andido, speaking to Anidosti on his FM, Mark explained he was, he was an integral part of the agenda because Sarkodie had disrespected the media outfit some time 
back. And so that's the basis for it. Let's take a break and um, go, I mean, let's take a break. When we return, we'll have the conversation on Stoneboy and the NFT endorsement, which has actually elicited reactions from some notable personalities, with Stoneboy saying that he cannot be pinned for the men's gold mess. It's still Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. Don't go away. <music> From the dawn of time, people have engaged in several businesses. With the onset of technology and innovation, life has relatively been made easier. By using debit or credit cards. Mobile banking. Thank you. And your favorite mobile money? Tech has indeed married business. On BizTech, we spend time with faces behind known and upcoming businesses in the country. Learn more about the new technologies and innovation. As well as find out about the trending issues in the world of business. Join us as we serve you with a variety of compelling interviews, projects and others right here on Ghana Web TV. Welcome back. It's Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. The name is Abrantipa. I'm doing this with McDonald Nanea Asari, a.k.a. Romeo, and then Black Pepe, Mystic Mike, yeah. uh, Brofura. <laughs> <laughs> so before we went on a break, Black Pepe was talking about um, Rita Dominic's wedding. Uh, 46 years, right? Yeah. Okay, 46 years. In fact, I've seen some of the pictures and the videos from her traditional marriage. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you want to see more on what actually transpired at that ceremony. And so, Rabna Everett is on standby with Vogue. Hi guys, welcome to Vogue on Bloggers Forum and Ghana Web TV. My name is Erabana Everett. We are going to be taking a cruise through Rita Dominic's wedding right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Vogue on Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. Before I went on the break, I said we were going to be taking a cruise through Rita Dominic's wedding. Mm, yes. Now the wedding was a splash of colors everywhere. I'm talking green, gold, pink, blue. Like it was totally amazing and everyone looked Amazing. Now some celebrities like Eniedo, Uche Jumbo, Lydia Fawson, Joke, and Chioma Akota came through to support Rita Dominic on her big day. Now they were not the only ones there. A lot of more other people and celebrities were there to support Rita Dominic. And their Ashwebi, the Ashwebi styles. Hey, I'm talking slits, I'm talking short, I'm talking tight, I'm talking bustiers. Mm. I'm sure you guys have seen some pictures online surfacing everywhere of the celebrities looking absolutely gorgeous. Today I'm going to be breaking it down for you like I usually do. Now starting off, let's talk about the queen herself, Rita Dominic, the woman of the day. Yes, she wore a George wrapper and a blouse with coral beads adorning her head, her neck and her her waist and of course you know for my evil girls they always carry their hostel evil girls ah, repping life rita dominic looked like an absolute queen on her traditional wedding day mm, yes mommy now her second outfit was a white and orangey reddish one like it was totally beautiful she looked like a princess with her headgear and her puffy shoulders on one side and a you know string like on a uh, shoulder on the other side you no know, like the outfit was totally amazing and i loved it it was also a wrap dress with a bustier this time she did not accompany this outfit with a hostel but instead with a glamorous feathered fan mm, and the stones in the fan though this is no ordinary fan i'm not gonna lie to you now rita dominic looked totally amazing now let's move on to the guests 
the Ashwebi side of things. Like, I've been waiting to get to the Ashwebi side of things because now I'm telling you, the guests at the wedding totally blew my mind with the Ashwebi styles, like different styles, you know? So I'll be back. Talking about splash of colors, now let's take a look at the celebrities that totally rocked their Ashwebi. Starting off, let's look at Uche Jumbo. Now, Uche Jumbo's Ashwebi, I love what she decided to create with her Ashwebi. The, the net on the arm side was totally dope. And of course, when you come to the bustier side of things, she had the gold and the green, you know, mixing and creating this a color code, a color blocking as we like to call it and it was totally amazing check out uche jumbo's outfit now let's look at our mama joke ha styles most styles now joke miss joke absolutely did it for me i love the class she brought to this outfit she wore mm, it is the wrap for me the styles mm. Charlie, they brought some to the side in the corner, so it's not easy. She accompanied her outfit with a very lovely beaded um, bag, and it was totally, totally amazing. Repping Ghana in Nigeria, Lydia Fawson, our very own. Mm, she looked stunning. She looked gorgeous. She looked... Mm, 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 uh. She gave her outfit that je ne sais quoi. I'm telling you, Lydia Fawson looked totally amazing in her as she would be. She, uh, you know, had the sexiness going on with her bustier which was cream and of course she had the definitions in the middle that does the emerald green and the gold definitions in the middle and of course her slit had the emerald green and the gold definitions in them as well the headgear was also on point yes choma had the angles working for me on her outfit she had angles here angles here angles everywhere and she looked totally amazing yes Choma had a little wrap extra fabric wrap around her sleeves that was just hanging on the side and of course you know she always bring class she always brings sassiness into whatever she does she rocked her as she will be finally let's look at the queen Iniedo mm, now Iniedo decided to go big with the arms i'm telling you fly 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 away she looked totally dope in her snatched outfit mm, yes now the color i guess the color for the ashu would be was emerald green and gold because everyone was rocking emerald green and gold at the wedding of course iniedo looked good she had a bustier and a wrap of course around her waist leading to her feet and then our fly 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 away i like the hands it was big a bold statement bold statement Iniedo looked amazing. Yes, my lovely people, that's it for Vogue on Bloggers Forum and Ghana Web TV. I am Irabna Everett, of course. Everyone that attended with Sir Dominic's wedding looked absolutely stunning in the Ashwebi. And of course, the queen herself looked amazing. My favorite word, you know, amazing. I'll see you same time. My name is Irabna Everett. Welcome back and thanks to Irabna Everett for the segment Vogue. Like I always say, if this is your first time of watching uh, Bloggers Forum for this year, or if it's actually the first time, cry out your wish. So I won't share you now. I feel no be a different dance here. Vogue is a segment that focuses on lifestyle and fashion. Now, on to Stone Boy and uh, NFT. NFT, now. <laughs> so, um, uh, which, which day was it, Kra? Uh, it was, I don't know, Tuesday, either Tuesday or Monday. And then Stoneboy tweeted, so every hardworking person deserves to make money. The future is now. Times are changing. Anticipate the hashtag CDCoin NFT. Then he tweets at CDCoin and said, join the CDCoin club. We'll tell you more later. Hashtag NFT's community. And it came with an artwork that has um, a box, a dollar sign, and some coins. Right after that post, a lot of people started commenting, including um, broadcaster or journalist Bridget Otu, that said, you are part of the ambassadors of men's gold who championed and led customers to lose money. Some have died as a result of the men's gold scam. 
Do you think it is fair to introduce them to another money-making venture? Do you really care about them? That was um, her post. Now, Stoneboy comes back and said, Big Sis, I think it's very biased and Romeo Becker biased and prejudiced to pin the loss of lives and properties of ambassadors who are no way, who in no way run the said company. I know people who have lost monies and others who gained, and I have personally lost very close alternatives too. The core problem of Men's Gold Saga has the least to do with ambassadors. Please, you stand in a good position as a media personality to seek the reality from number one and the government. One love. Then, Bridget Otu comes back and said, I love Stoneboy and his songs, but I absolutely detest they lead their fans astray on things like this. It's not always about money. And that was because some people said her comment was born out of um, um, hate for Stoneboy. Stoneboy comes back and said, I appreciate you a lot. I understand there have been scam schemes, and there will always be. But please, kindly read about NFTs so that you don't aid to drown my hard-earned reputation. Don't you think I should know better than misleading people? So, sis, this is another tweet. Sis, if you don't mind, I would love us to engage in a convo about blockchain technology, NFTs, cryptocurrencies. And so Stoneboy says we should read. So we will read, definitely. Now, on Forbes, <laughs> Forbes.com, what is an NFT? An NFT is a digital asset that represents real-world objects like art, music, in-game items, and videos. They are brought and sold online frequently, like cryptocurrency. And they are generally encoded with the same underlining software as many cryptos. Although they have been around since 2014, NFTs are gaining notoriety now because they, they are becoming an increasingly popular way to buy and sell digital artwork. A staggering $174 million has been spent on NFTs since November 2017. NFTs are also generally one of a kind, or at least one of the very limited run uh, have unique identifying codes. Essentially, quotes, NFTs create digital scarcity, says, uh, is it Ari or RIU? Um, forgive me if I butchered the name, Chairman of Washington Technology Industry Association. Uh, that's the, making that comment. Says, distance in stark contrast to most digital creations, which are almost always indefinite in supply. Hypothetically, cutting off the supply should raise a value of, given, of a given asset, assuming it's in demand. So that's um, what the crypto NFT is about. If you want to learn more of this, uh, join the Bistec team, Mauli, Ernestina, Oyo, and um, uh, Stella Jejom, and they will give you all the gist that you need to know. And in case you want to do it, that is your own cup of tea, whether you will drink it or you will pour it. <laughs> Interestingly, all my panelists are drinking water. Me too. Make us up the water so. <laughs> okay, so I, I mean, before I come to Romeo, for those who may not know about the men's gold issue, uh, some people invested in the gold dealership firm, and at a point we had the um, SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, coming in to warn uh, investors that it's a, it's a fraudulent scheme and so they should go and they withdraw their money. And some people began withdrawing their monies and, you know, men's gold was in a difficult situation because the people that were withdrawing their monies, uh, some of them were unable to have their investment back. They had their funds locked up there because we were told that the way it is, once you invest and you are reaping, they are also, you know, people are also getting trading. Uh, trading with it. And so when you all go to invest, 
you leave the company in a very difficult situation. That's what the men's gold issue, uh, how the men's gold issue actually came about, and it's actually in court. And so, yes, we are not talking about men's gold, but the issue is actually related to men's gold because an ambassador, one of the ambassadors of men's gold, is endorsing NFT. Let, Romeo, let me let me uh, take let me. Okay. I will have to take a bite mm. before Romeo comes in. Okay. So when Men's Bank Ghana Limited mm -hmm. set up shop in Ghana, the first or one of the earliest publicity work done was at CTFM, mm. where they advertised that you are in the land of gold. You should own a piece of gold. You are in the, in the land of gold. You should own a piece of gold. It was advertised on radio. And in principle, I subscribe to this mantra of men's bank, which became men's gold. Because for crying out loud, for all the over 150 years that <coughs> gold has been mined in the Gold Coast, 10 Ghana, how many of its citizens have even seen and touched gold physically? How many? You would think that for a fisherman, your walls will not have any problem with fish. You would think that for a butcher, your walls will not have problem with beef. But it is so in Africa's very regrettable existence that our resources do not inure to our benefit. Ghana's gold is largely mined and exported. It benefits residents and citizens of other states, rather than the Ghanaians from whose land it is mined. It is for that reason why, in principle, I subscribe entirely to Nana Pia Mensen's dictum that once you are a citizen of Ghana, you should have access to gold. And from 2014 thereabout to about 2017, the model they rolled out was so impactful that people started withdrawing funds from other banks, other financial institutions. They even, it even affected the treasury bills that people were subscribing to to invest in men's gold. It is that which became alarming to the central bank and the others. That's, no, this cannot continue because all the other financial instruments were taking a hit. Mm. Why were people overwhelmingly subscribing to men's gold? It was because they were delivering. If you put your 30,000 there, you would get your returns. If you put your 4,000 there, you got your 10%. And they did this smoothly for about three years. Till the withdrawals from the other financial institutions and the instruments became alarming. Data bank was a casualty. Data bank was a big casualty. It is there. So it cannot be that men's gold was a poisoned chalice for the Ghanaians. No. But then they also went beyond their remits. They also started becoming reckless. And when the uh, Security and Exchange Commission came in that we want you to regularize your activities, we want to contain the limits so that leave and let others leave, the approach they took proved to be their undoing. Because as a business entity, you had to look at the short analysis. And the threat came from the SEC, the central bank. They, they undermined or underestimated that threat. NFT. And then eventually it led to uh, people being so alarmed because the regulatory body said, do not deal with them. And then people started withdrawing. Now, Stoneboy was not the only ambassador. Mm -hmm. Joycelyn Dumas, Jackie Apia, and all the others. Chami Kwame. Or Chami Kwame. People mm -hmm. that folks trusted. Mm -hmm. And so if I saw on my yard the billboard of Dumas mm -hmm. with a gold bar advertising or you know selling the message of men's gold, if anybody else couldn't convince me, I might have been convinced by Jocelyn Dumas. And so it is true what Brigidotu says, that as an ambassador, Stoneboy should be guarded. That Rubium, you did one and people spared you. If you were to go into another uh, 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 entity and you let people lose again, you might not be so lucky. 
People pour their venom on you. And so Stoneboy has to tread cautiously. You ask, what is the NFT? But, 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 but with, 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 with what Stoneboy has said, <laughs> that if you read about the NFT, mm -hmm. I mean, you heard me read his comments mm -hmm. on the men's go thing mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. How... Sh how do you say he should he, he should be mindful of how oh, oh, he, he has goes to be, about he, oh he has to be guarded he needs to be guarded because for the first part because in your narrative mm -hmm. you said that men's gold was not was not bad mm -hmm. until it wasn't a bad for those who had put in thirty thousand mm -hmm. and got in returns are accruing to thirty thousand mm -hmm. and then more mm -hmm. so now this year mono that's the back mm -hmm. and then you got extra money mm -hmm. but for those who came late the late bears and that has always who been had there. invested the thirty thousand and yet not gotten the approval mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. it is they how then do you blame ambassadors the ambassador part comes in because why do nations have ambassadors? Around if I'm itching to come in. Yeah, I'll come to Why you do know. nations have ambassadors? Mm. Thriving states have ambassadors to negotiate and have their way with other states. And even failing states also have ambassadors to also make and plead their case. So an ambassador embodies your aspirations. It embodies your ideals. And for brands, you know, you can't go and be selling alcohol and go and take uh, a Muslim. I can't be selling pork and go and take a Muhammad as my brand ambassador. Do you not agree? Mm -hmm. So you take someone who aligns with your product, who embodies the ideals of the product that you are selling. It was the case with Ophelia Schwarzenegger and uh, Pinaman Cosmetics. She embodied the product till it, she said it started reacting negatively mm. or adversely on her skin, for which they are now in conflict. Okay. Romeo. Avantipa, the essence of being a brand ambassador is for you to have that kind of uh, effect or for your image effects mm. to be carried onto the brand. For instance, if to the Werner, right? If, uh, an artist like Manifest, uh, if I'm not a Werner person and I watch Gunwork TV mm. and I see Werner and maybe I didn't have that kind of interest in it, and then I see a brand tipper or a top-notch artist, let me use Manifest, and then he is taking Werner. I'm convinced that we're well, in super. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what we, what, what, celebrities or brand ambassadors have on us as followers is that they tell you that oh this is correct because there are a lot of fake products and fake deals in town but once you see a john dumelo a sarcodier associated with a brand then you are guaranteed of that kind of uh, security or protection that oh come on sarcodier will not buy anything fake or Stumbo will not buy anything fake. Sarko will not involve himself in anything fake. Mm. So it's the more reason why if an artist uh, misbehaves or does anything on towards and anchors a brand, the brand owners strips them off their ambassadorial role mm -hmm. because they have that kind of influence. So if the brand owners realize you're losing that influence, they have to strip you because you've embarrassed yourself, you've disgraced yourself. Mm. Like just like the Tiwa issue, which cost her so much, right? Mm. Now, what Bridget Otis said in tandem with the men's gold issue and uh, what we call the NFT, right on the surface, the way you explain uh, the NFT on Forbes, you know, people pick uh, things from outside and and give us, uh, I don't know, but they, they mirror it to us mm. for it to seem like this is what they want to give us. Mm. But it gets to a point where we realize that it's just like Piram and men's gold. Mm. Things have happened in the past that from the beginning, it starts so nice and people uh, attest to the fact that, oh, there is an authenticity to prove that, oh, this is correct. But it ends up being bad news. So what Brigitte Otto was trying to do is that Stoneboy, 
there's been an issue where people have even lost their lives, people have lost their property, people have lost their jobs, and people are still uh, running from uh, uh, debtors and banks because of this men's gold issue. And it's not even settled. The, the water is still a bit muddy. Mm. So this is an avenue where you should be careful in treading on such path. You get it. If this thing should come from someone like Halfway Day, whose brand is in a different perspective and very valuable, right? Who probably was not an anchor of such brand ambassadors on the men's gold thing, then people will sit back and do some analysis and think that, okay, Kafui Day, okay, and then they will start tilting towards it. But you, Stone Boy, you anchored men's gold, mm -hmm. and it, how did it end? Now you are introducing another thing to us, which we are not sure of. You, Abrantipa, you are able to read, to decipher what is wrong and what, what is right. Others may even read and may not still understand. And the laymen who have their money to do business, all they need is for you to convince them to invest. So if it's Tomboy telling them to invest, and they believe it's Tomboy, they will invest. Mm. But what happened before is what uh, uh, Bridges O2 is cautioning Tomboy about. So for me, honestly speaking, that was the step in the right direction. Mm. And Tomboy needs to be very careful. Very, very careful because it shouldn't always come from, why if it's so okay, so good, they should use the politicians. To do what? Uh, to promote it, if it's good, use the government machinery. Oh, but you have always been saying, I mean, you, you just attested to the fact that when you use celebrities to push your product, the, the marketing becomes My easier. reason for asking for them to use them, the, the, such avenues so that mm -hmm. when it goes through the government system, sex, sec, mm -hmm. and other uh, government agencies, we able to ascertain it's a, a, a validity as to whether it's an authentic entity mm -hmm. or not. So it can open the floodgate to other people. To, to, if Koyo Pankruman comes to tell us that, okay, this thing is not like men's gold, mm -hmm. being a government spokesperson. So at the end of the day, people would have someone to hold accountable if it goes wrong. But today in men's gold issue, who, whom are they holding accountable? Right? Mm -hmm. And these are the people who took money and convince their followers that this is a good entity they invested in. And I am a a for whom a Luso Munqua, a Bill Summer Properties, a Bim Macra School and Omocono, a Bim Macu School of Papa Bill, but unless I told Anna Marede, oh my baby, because of men's gold. Mm. So for me, if I were Stone Boy or if I was part of his management team, I would advise him, and yet deal be any end also, like Manifest said. You see, there are some deals, eh? They look good and the money is good. But let your integrity guide you. There's this Nigerian artist, I think uh, he had this deal with an alcoholic beverage, but he has a Muslim background. Mm. It was a big deal. He had to snub it because it's against Islam. his ethics and religion. Mm. So if you, as a principled musician, as tumbo as you are, something of this nature has happened before, you were supposed to stay away from any Yedi. yedi. Is this going to harm his brand in any way? If he persists yes. to associate with this brand? Yes. And something well, happens? Well, the truth of the matter is, um, when the banter went on, mm. I also took it upon myself to edify myself, get to know what this NFT, especially when that they was the coffin guys, mm. the poor Ben. Yeah. When they had mine, because Tom Boy cited it mm -hmm. as being, um, he said, he said, look, these people made so much, they are even donating. So I said, okay, let's give this chap the benefit. Mm. And so I said, what is this thing all about then? Now, uh, for our edification, Bitcoin or blockchain uh, is a system of recording information in a way that makes it difficult or impossible to change, hack or cheat the system. A blockchain is essentially a data ledger of transactions that is duplicated and distributed across the entire network of computer systems on a blockchain. So I said, okay. So there's something, there's something there. Uh, and then uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are popular examples of blockchains. Everyone is allowed to connect to the blockchain and transact on them. And also... Um, Cryptos, cryptocurrency, 
our digital money. The blockchain is a database for recording transactions of said digital money. So basically, it is money going through computer networks. Mm. Money going through computer networks. And they said what? Is cryptocurrency a good long-term investment? And the answer was yes. According to sophisticated investors, such as banks, hedge funds, and pension, mm -hmm. and pension funds. So it is something that is emerging. It is something that is um, being um, assessed, and then more and more people are coming on board. Mm -hmm. But um, in Stoneboy's case, it appears people are saying, let it come from somebody else but you. Let it be that it's coming from Manifest. Let it be that it's coming from someone else. Mm. And you will be you. Because Mu, Wu, Jocelyn Duman, Becca, Jackie, Eba, you know, you solidarize with the good people who um, um, are We didn't hear that. We didn't have a press conference. We didn't even have personal communication that folks, it's rather unfortunate that the latter day saints, the late best that you invested, you couldn't get the returns to accrue to your original investment plus the dividends. Mm. Not, none of that. Everybody went to They It's as if they dissolved. All of them. Despite all the love that the good people had shown them. And so, bring it all to is right in that Stoneboy has to be guarded because if you front this one again, and it so happens that this one also does not run mm. its full course, who knows what might happen to you? What if it does? If it runs, that's his game. But if it doesn't, who knows what might happen that one day, whilst Madame Louisa has prepared some acclaim for three days and you are eating, somebody will jump the wall and come to your house. Then what happens? Somebody will stalk you. Because Obi we are losing men's gold. And we'll stalk you. We don't want that. It's happening all over and all over. Mm. It's not something new. So, my brother, Eche, Satileke, I beg you, this one, let it be. I know you are trying to edify, you are trying to educate, you are trying to inform, but this money, you let this one go. Mm. Right, so that's uh, Black Pepper with blackpepper.com. And then I'm on best of me, also. Yes, a man can brag. So, we, 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 we spoke with a lawyer. We wanted to know whether uh, brand ambassadors or influencers could be sued for promoting a merchandise that actually later turns out to be a nuisance uh, or fraudulent to, to the followers or the buyer. And um, so, we had an interview with a lawyer. His name is. Justice Abdullahi, and uh, this is what he had to say. Typically and usually, generally, <clears throat> um, an advert is not um, in law. We, um, in law, is not supposed to be legally any information in an advert um, is not legally uh, a matter of. Uh, um, um, uh, I'm, I'm fine. It, it cannot give grounds to any suit, usually, and, that, and that's the general principle. That if uh, anything that is said in an advert is uh, known to be uh, called, in fact, it is known to be a mere path, uh, which simply implies that it has no um, a holding on which anyone can rely on for the purposes of any discussion. So. And the same goes for persons who seek to promote or who promote um, products or services. Um, because they are in the conduct um, advertising a product, they cannot be held legally liable for anything that they do or say. Um, and so for a person to be able to sue on be entitled to any form of damages or relief that he seeks on an advert or or on on the on the persons that were used for the purposes of the advert i.e whether the person is an influencer or an ambassador or an endorser whatever um, description or nomenclature that you seek to um, label that person with is that 
the, the person suing would have to be able to show deeper than simply relying on the advert or the comments made by the promoters or the ambassadors or the influencers. You be, should be able to show uh, particularly that it was purely on the basis of this influenza or, or what he said or, or something more deeper than just the generality of the advert or the person that um, if you would have bought the item anyway regardless of the person for instance who who used himself or who allowed himself to be used for the purpose of promoting the services or the advert um, it would be difficult for you to justify any losses that you suffer um, on the basis of the person that um, was used for the advert however if um, if you were able to show that indeed you bought the item because, for instance, Tomboy recommended it or because of what something that the advert itself said that you literally complied with but went against you, then you are likely to get some damage. So um, the general principle is that um, we all must be careful whether buyers or, or promoters or influencers, we all must be careful in the way we conduct ourselves or the kind of things we see. Some of the things you see can be taken for granted and so may not be enough for a legal tussle between you and, and the general public. But where, for instance, you give too many specifics and you, 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 you make it look like uh, the thing is a done deal, um, sort of, and that is capable of everything you claim it is. And the person complies with all the requirements of the particular advert and does not go in his favor or does not address his concerns when uh, eventually um, um, brings himself into the fold of the persons who rely on those ways or adverts, then you are likely to suffer some form of um, liabilities for the purposes of um, this discussion. So, yes, yeah, so the general principle is no, but the specifics, as I have indicated, are capable of um, bringing um, a person to some form of liability for the kind of things he sees or does in, in such instances. Right, so that's um, Lawyer Justice Abdullah. Let's come back and then wrap up the discussion. Let me take the final words of my panelist. Let me begin with Romeo Nafi Yenkwada. I think, sir, Abrantipa, mm. um, Ghana Hankasan, celebrity life and followership. I was a a course no be at me study me because uh, the definition of celebrity and what, who even uh, a celebrity is Sisiano uh, too vague. Ubi ubu owa in some amuka ibi na me person make me because in some boa ne a vague as in what? Ubi a sorry ubu okwa wa mi waka pass me ni mi insa wa wa ukoshe ni Instagrama or a celeb or a actress or yes se mi wa. Na so wa i movie or a actress. Oya waka pass a oya Ruben how how impactful. And a celebrity in suya a famous person especially in entertainment of course. It's as simple as that. Bro, funo ni 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 adi awo mi ni ni da hoda da. I didn't think you're person. You're the best one. You're a celebrity. You're so achieve a certain status and suddenly you're a celebrity. You 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 achieve something worth celebrating. That's a celebrity. Exactly. Bro, for instance, you're a famous person. <laughs> How? What? Say be a famous. In say, for instance, I get yeah, a for instance, there be fatty, there there. This a black beauty. Uh, Rashida. Rashida. Yeah. Uh, uh, Black She won an award. She mm. won uh, Vyasa award. Those times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like how relevant, how impactful. <laughs> but it's, it, you see, uh, it, should, looking should, at should the meaning of put celebrity. it in context? Uh, context. You know, it should uh, be contextualized. Yeah, you're better, bro. She said, Oko Beverly Hills, now she stars and she's super uh, stars and she's celebrities in the world. And you'll be happy. Romeo, celebrity is a famous person, especially in sports or entertainment. Otherwise, a celebrity to be a celeb means okay. in a state and, and the minya, of being well known. And the minya, uh, Romeo, we are celebrity. And, and the minya uh, statue because we are celebrity. I mean, minya statue because, because in well the food known. of sports, in the food of entertainment, uh -huh. and even in pageant. Why a Miss Ghana pageant? No, and so but I don't see myself as one. You are one. I you see well someone. Known. No, who is who? Team. I mean, can we even hey, show? I think we are abusing it. Into uh -huh. be a sorry, uh -huh. no, we use you. And what saddens my heart, and I say, uh -huh. uh, business people. Uh, w w uh, are leveraging on some of these names and are giving deals to even the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
only good image. Mm -hmm. But because why, why be their trending tea, mm -hmm. not the business at all now. So, so I show be good to pan say after we are you are trending and do with your mom's opinion. I'm in trending, mm -hmm. and that is what I need. I would like her to check. And if we are dealing with industry, I think the gatekeepers, mm -hmm. like those who are uh, who deal with people be, uh, with, with, so, with so much vendetta based on their whims and caprices, if we have a common agenda as an industry. Well, uh, 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 we're friends said uh, tourism. Mm -hmm. They should even be pushing that tourism should be a subject of study, even mm -hmm. from the basic school. In Takoda, the person knows about tourism. And you don't invest, uh, push so much into celebrities anchoring, acting as ambassadorial uh, 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 ambassadors, ambassadors for uh, uh, tourism, and I don't think the results be answered at the end. But you still fall on these musicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel said they should have a roundtable discussion, and I call Michael Kriku Mante. To apologize to these two individuals, Shatawale and Sarkodi, if he's indeed, if in, indeed he believes that he has so much integrity and wants the, 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 the forward march of this industry, media mm. minimum said so much. I've said we don't have an industry; we are just operating in a space where everyone feels it's powerful. Mm. That's all. Black, can you cash out cryptocurrency? The answer is to cash out your funds. You first need to sell your cryptocurrency for cash. Then you can either transfer the funds to your bank or buy more crypto. There's no limit on the amount of crypto you can sell for cash. Link a payment method to your account before cashing out. And to moi, yeah, I know business people, people with some money to spare, I have been going around looking at options, mm. cryptocurrency options. So this is for you. Mm. If you want to go into it, know what you are getting into. Many thanks. Many thanks to you as well. Black Pepper is with blackpepper.com. McDonald Nanea Asari, a.k.a. Romeo, is an author, columnist. He is a voice coach, Miss Ghana. Charlie, Miss Ghana, is this a movie? Um, more you preparation are still ongoing. Okay. Um, my selection stage is new in the mm. prepare ladies now. Okay. For right, lunch. Mati. Uh, we have a pet and Rena say, Yeah, D and no, and come on. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Bloggers Forum. If you want to know more about the NFT, uh, cryptocurrency, and all the co meninis, watch Best Tech. Uh, you and her people will come your way with that education. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Bloggers Forum. Thanks to Kwame Adom, thanks to Bernard, thanks to Sandra, and thanks to Sami for the production and the filming of this show. I am Benefo Boabin Abrantepa. <music>
actor we dey see ni train we dey bia but say dey obezi wo germany na we say abaye word mafo so nya no kwari e binum say no kwari we be say cause say e be hu bare man nim yeri nje dey na me say ah obi ni ade ne hu na wa kwa ko jealous e chie chie hu ebusi na we say bare word na wo social media out here won ho na wo ye dey 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 inti jaye me post e bachelorette e fly na mafo dey hu 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 na yeso mu dem dey en train ye hwese train na kasa be come as na say e no kwari ye wo ho ani hu say Tracy a posty mm -hmm. bachelorette party. It was a black thing bachelorette party. Maybe it was a bachelorette party. The party kakraya bridesmaid then and bride and warrior kakra head of a D day na kasan. And you be na warrior. Now we say, oh, Tracy, they be able to say Tracy dressing in cap. Now we say, at around their commas. Oh, now we have a makeup on point, hair on point. She was, she was, yeah, she was looking her best. Me and me, many cats have been busy. Me many fake fans. I no quarry. Now just what the party she share so. Now I did change. No, I did change. You who say, eh, you're not to know your friend Asibulanga, but me they're ringing. But to the new one, me they won't name. Eh, you fear trust nigga. A posty. I just say as I was arriving from airport, no chima. Eh, where they need to know what I be do. And check one, you who say, eh, fear posty. Eh, Tracy, one of me, eh, you pre-wedding photos. I just say on the front, he just say, what snail cream be money? I didn't know choose any in law. No congratulations, eh, Tracy, but eh, now pictures in the air. Now we say very much kinting, very much gram. We say we see pieces ta. I say, mustache, kakwa, beard gang, you're creepy. I'm offensive, I'm born, it's in a dunce, I'm a coconut.